amazing thing. We have examples of creativity, un un unlimited kinds of creativity here. New findings that we're going to make society better. So just a little context here about what Vanderbilt's doing on these great days. In this class of 2015, we have two, 323 individuals who are getting PhDs and another 246 who are getting master's degrees of various sorts. That's a lot of new information. That's a lot of discovery. That's a lot of learning. That is an impressive number, and it's one of the Vanderbilt to be part of At the start of the century, it was about half what it is today, because Vanderbilt is about pushing the bounds of knowledge, about pushing our ideas, about pushing learning and discovery. So let me just give you a couple of facts, because I'm a, I'm a data guy, I'm a social scientist, I believe in evidence, and a lot of my colleagues will benefit and prof profit from these. And all of the parents and family out here, which this ceremony is so much for, as we have our life cop, life flight above us. Um, 80% of the people here graduating have published an article in a referee journal. 80% of the And frankly, it underscores the value of discovery that all our students have because, for instance, our colleagues in the humanities, I'm going to give this a little pause here. Our colleagues in the humanities tend not to be doing journals as much as they tend to be doing books. So their dissertations, for example, aren't yet published, but they're going to be contributing again to what we know about the world. These are important things. Each of our graduates, on average, have gone to five different conferences to make presentations. That, too, has contributed to knowledge and, and our understanding of how the world works. But this isn't just about quantity. It's also about quality. And Vanderbilt's an institution that's on the move, and so is the graduate school. For example, in 2001, we admitted about a third of our applicants, about 36% to be exact. This last year, we admitted 12%. We are just able to admit the best and the brightest, and all of you are, in fact, the best and the brightest. We've had, huge, we've had a huge increase in the number of NSF fellowships for our graduate students. Five-fold, in fact, over the last decade. That is an impressive accomplishment because the NSF, like the NIH, and we've also done well in the NIH, these are kind of the gold standards for external review processes and employing a very rigorous process that leads to a decision about who gets that kind of precious money. And our students continue to do better and better. Another thing that I want to point out that I'm particularly proud of, and, and I was just having these data collected, is that our proportion among our PhDs, for example, of underrepresented minorities has more than doubled over the last 15 years. It's gone from 8% to 17%. And I want to thank Dean Brunson, and I also want to thank Roger Crockley as well for making this thing happen. To make the university great. To make the university great, you have to have discovery. But to have discovery, you must bring different perspectives to bear. It isn't about one discipline. It isn't about the discipline of sociology. It isn't about the, the discipline of physics. It's about bringing all those together and diversity is broadly defined and it's part of our culture and these kinds of numbers are really important and I want to thank all the individuals, not just Dean Brunson and Roger Chockley, but others who've made that kind of thing possible. Here's something that I found particularly surprising. The first part isn't so surprising. We do a survey of our graduate students every couple of years and the last one we did was in 2012. We asked how satisfied people were with their academic life and 85% said they were satisfied. That's a good number. 15% were not. That's a pretty good number. Then you ask, how much were they satisfied with their life in general? The number plummets. Why? Because being in graduate school, okay, it's not so fun. And the parents here, and the family and friends and the loved ones, they, in fact, deserve special applause because they are the ones who have also weathered this <laughs> Rather than citing statistics, I, I, I actually asked Dean Hoover to collect some examples of accomplishments of our students. And they just poured in, and they're just, I mean, I, I could spend my full 55 minutes just, <laughs> just talking about those individuals. But I do want to talk about a, some, some, some of them to, again, give you a sense of what Vanderbilt's about and what our graduate school is all about. Kamya Rajaram is an example of someone who's graduating today who's doing research 
who's figuring out ways to develop therapies to regenerate human retinas. In other words, improve our eyesight, give a chance for people to have sight. That is a discovery worth doing, and that's what Vanderbilt supporting, and that individual is doing that kind of research. That's just amazing. Or Rebecca Tuvel. She's getting a PhD from philosophy. She's going on to a life of learning and discovery because she's going to teach at Rhodes College, about three hours down the road in Memphis, and she's going to have the opportunity to impart her knowledge that she learned here to her students. That's an impressive feat. Neil Donning is getting a postdoc, or has a postdoc now at Harvard in the Children's Hospital. That is pretty impressive. Lauren Brinkley Rubenstein. She's tackled the issue, well, she has fans. <laughs> she's tackled the issue of public health. She's secured grants, she's done publications. And what she's doing is she's looking at, and I want to make sure I get this right, the incar previously incarcerated HIV positive men and their ability and access to health care. That is really an important question. That is something that's worth investing in. And the fact that she's done it and Vanderbilt made that possible again. So, so amazing. Courtney Thomas. PhD in sociology. Oh, again, somebody with fans. She was part of the Robert Wood Johnson project or, or fellowship program that was tied to Meharry Medical College, and we were trying to bridge and build conversations across a wide swath just here in Nashville. And she had a fellowship for there. Now she's going to be an assistant professor at the University of Kentucky, which their basketball team I'm not very wild about, but being able to be at the University of Kentucky and continuing the discipline, moving forward on discovery and learning is an amazing thing. Here's another thing, Anders Carlson Wee. This is an individual who received the, the a National Endowment for Cre Arts Creative Writing Fellowship. Now this fellowship is usually only given to people who are faculty. The fact that a graduate student won it is just a sign of the quality of our students. This is very difficult and a tribute to this individual and the accomplishments of that individual. Finally, and I am winding up, Alex Walsh. This individual, she specializes in new imaging techniques that distinguish different breast cancer types. She's using laser technology, even a custom-built microscope, I'm told according to my friend uh, Doug Adams, that's being able to distinguish these different types of cancer and making it possible to have more efficient treatments that will allow more people to survive. Again, impressive, impressive stuff. And this is just a sample of all the great things that these students have done. I could go on and on, but of course, we need to, to get to the diplomas. But I do have a couple of other things I want to add. One of the things that's woven through the thread of my remarks, but also many of you know, is that we, as a graduate school, and all of you, we're getting to make sure that you are finding the right kinds of careers that where you can pursue your passions. That is really important. And I want to thank Ruth Schimmer, Dean Schimmer, for making that possible, because she's working with all of you to make sure that you have the kinds of careers. And this is really important in this day and age. We have a great research university, and all of you have made it greater. And we expect all of you to go on and do great things and pass on your knowledge to continue that, that process, because that's what it's all about. And we just appreciate so much. Before I close, I want to end with two thank yous. First, I want to thank all the people who organized this possible and all the staff of the Graduate School to make this possible. They've done a huge amount of work and they've made this great celebration possible. And let's give them a round of applause.